So we've spent a lot of time thinking about work, but I want to bring it together with the idea of energy. And the first time that we see the link is through what we call the work kinetic energy theorem. So we learned about work. And is it work in the simplest definition is a force that's applied that results in a displacement of an object. But if we think about it, we've seen force before when we worked with Newton's law, the second law specifically. So, I don't know if that's showing up as well as I'd like it to. So, Newton's second law says F equals MA, where acceleration is the derivative of velocity with respect to time. But in any case, if you think about it, when we're doing work on an object, we're applying a force. And Newton's second law tells us when there's a net force applied, that results in an acceleration. So it does seem, but we should expect that if we do work, we're going to change the speed of an object. In order to really see what the end result is, we want to look at the integral form of work. Where we take the integral of the force with the displacement. Now, like we saw in a previous slide, it'll just make it a little easier if we assume that the force and the displacement are in the x direction. It doesn't really change our end result, but it'll just make it a little easier for us to get at what we want to get at. So if we write it like this, now we could replace the force with mass times acceleration. So the acceleration is just the derivative of velocity with respect to time. And now we've put that in for force, but we still have the dx. Now we can do this, actually there's two different ways that we can do it. And I'll go along first of all with the way that the book does it, but then I'll show you another way that mathematically to me makes a little bit more sense. If we If we just sort of change where the dt is, we see that we have m dv and then dx dt, but dx dt is just velocity. which is just m v dv. And that's the integral that we would have. Now, I want to just show you another way we can sort of change this derivative by using what we call the chain rule. Which the chain rule is useful when we want to make a change in variable. So instead of taking the, res to, in order to get the velocity of the derivative of velocity with respect to time, I can first take it with respect to x and then take it with dx dt. So this, these two terms together, actually, you can see, you can sort of imagine the dx's cancel out, does give me dv dt, and we still have this dx. And what happens is we're left with the integral m dv, because the dx's cancel out, and then dx dt is velocity. So we actually end up with the exact same thing. And so now we want to see what does that give us. I'm going to leave this work right here for now, but just remind us what we're trying to do is we're saying work is the derivative of f dot ds. We changed it to f of x dx 
And after a series of steps, we said that it could be written as m times v times dv, v initial, v final. So the idea is now, because we changed the variable that we're integrating at over, we're integrating over velocity, where this time over here we were integrating over position. And this was from x initial to x final. These endpoints really correspond to each other in that the velocity initial corresponds to the speed it had when it was at the initial position. Same thing goes with the final velocity and the final position. If we integrate this, we get 1 half mv squared. We're going to evaluate it at v final and v initial, which equals 1 half m v final squared minus 1 half m v initial squared. And so we found that the work is equal to the change in this quantity, whatever this 1 half mv squared is, but as it, what it had, how much it had of this at the end versus how much it had in the beginning. It turns out that this term, 1 half mv squared, is actually called the kinetic energy. And it's the energy that an object has because it's moving. Notice it has a v. So what, what are we saying here? We're saying that when work is done, on an object, then if there's net work done, the kinetic energy of the object will change because of the changing speed. So we sort of summarize it as work is just the change in the kinetic energy. And this is where I had mentioned when we introduced the concept of work that we're starting to talk about how energy gets transferred into a system or transferred between one form and the other. As the work is done on the system, the end result is through that effort, the kinetic energy of the system, which is the energy it has because of motion, will increase. If the negative amount of work was done, then the kinetic energy will go down as well. And so this is where we first start to see a direct link between this concept of work and the concept of energy through the work kinetic energy theorem.